<laughs> well, well, why, why would anyone want to hurt a kid? You know, it's simple as that. And, and then we've got to look at the stats. 80% of the prison population, the male prison population, come from an abused background. The majority of heroin addiction, class A drug addiction, opiate addiction, comes from sexual abuse. You know? Mm. What is going on? Why are they not sorting this out? And then why are they attacking those that come forward? We're seeing survivors coming forward and, and, and either going to prison or getting sued. You know, there's one woman, she was abused by a politician. She spoke out, he's tried to sue her, but he lost, he lost the case. But he tried to sue her, she's got nothing. He tried to sue her for a million quid. Well, good luck, well, she's got nothing. You know, she's not even got her health because of what he did to her. And he, he was a politician, I'm not going to name him, but he's always there claiming he's helping survivors of abuse. So, of course, yeah, of course. Y y y you know, we, we see it time and time again. And I mean, I've, I've had information from officers about so many actors, singers. I mean, I can't even watch Netflix anymore because I look at it thinking, I know that man's... And of course, with me, what I do now, getting people's testimonies, the same names keep cropping up, cropping up time and time and time again. And, and these go from the top right away through the system. So I'm now threatened, I'm frightened, and I'm genuinely frightened. And I'm told, just go home and be with your kids. And I thought, well, how can this guy be so confident and, and stand there? And, and there was a witness in the room. There was, there was a woman that was there who was in charge of the HR department who made a statement in court, which was, and I, I brought up in court, the civil hearing, that she's a liar. And I told the judge, the woman, if she relies on a statement, she's a liar. And she stood and denied that this went on. And, you know, shame on this woman. I'm not going to name her. I could name mm -hmm. her because it's gone through the court. Yep. But I'm not. Um, and she's involved in a charity now, helping people. And, and she's, she's lied. She had a chance to do good. And she chose why, to lie. Why, why do you think? Because her job will be at risk. Because she was present when I was threatened and did nothing. So the onus is now on her, on the vicarious liability front. But again, where's her moral backbone? She mm. hasn't got one. Mm. Uh, shame on this and actually that that hurt me more than the guy who threatened me because I know that he's a weak man and a tosser for doing that mm -hmm. and an evil man you know um, and I don't think that, that we could ever butter him up any other way whereas this woman claims to be a woman that has got a, a, a position of benevolence and even in a private life try, tries to do benevolent work but I'm thinking no you, you're a liar you're a liar and so that 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 I found a big act of betrayal on behalf of that, because I had a lot of respect for that woman, you know, and I did. And uh, again, I, I I could, well within my, my rights to name show, I'm, I'm not here to, to cause anyone pain. No, too I understand much, that, too John. Much pain. It's about learning the, about the, what's happening. There's no it? mileage in that, you know, no yeah. mileage in that. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm frightened now, and of course I, I start drinking, you know, um, things start sliding downhill. So I, I, I move on to another unit, but I continue dealing with children because I know it's the only way for me. This is what we're doing. So I go on to a, a, a child abuse unit in Haringey, and I was told that there are no um, cases of, of child sexual exploitation in Haringey over the last two years. Within 10 minutes, I'd found 10 children in 10 minutes. By the end of the first week, I'd found 50 kids. Yeah. You know, so again, I set up a unit to look into this and then it all, get, it all comes crashing down again. I get threatened by someone who runs, um, who's in charge of child sexual exploitation for a major, a major uh, children's charity. There's two children's charities, it always comes to mind. Yeah. Um, again, I won't name it, but um, th th this woman threatened me, you know, you can't go doing this and start shouting at me. You know, and, and she's in one of these kiss shows. So I say to people, be careful where mm. your money goes. Yeah. Be very careful where your money goes because look at Childline, right? All the years that I was um, working on child um, abuse investigations, we had referrals. Do you know all the years, all the cases, and there was many, I dealt with one, one case that was a referral from Childline. So where did them referrals go? Yeah. Where do they go? I mean, they certainly don't get through to investigations. So, you know, and what have they done? What have they done to, to change the situation? Nothing. They made a lot of money, I know that. And another charity, again, they, they were active in, in, in stopping people like me doing our job. It's so, fucking abhorrent and frightening yeah. on levels I can't even comprehend, John. Yeah, so I moved again. Um, 
and then sort of my life isn't really going the way it should be going, you know. Um, and I sort of tread water for a few years because my kids are young and I know that if I speak out. But what happens is there's a game changer because uh, the case is going through the court of this young girl named Zoe who came forward, the one I went to see in Cambridgeshire, who spoke out. She she ends up dead on the street. And that broke me. And I'm like, hang on, this is wrong. And it was a very suspicious death. This brave girl, you know, that came forward. And I thought, no, this, and it, something starts eating me up. And then stories start coming out, coming out. And then Jimmy Savile dies. And my God, that was it. Boom. Mm. These stories were pouring out. And I'm like, wow. And then I start hearing of other police officers that have been threatened. So I thought it was just me. I thought I'd done something hor horrifically bad. Mm. I thought, my God, they're, um, it's me, I'm an idiot. Uh, you know, um, they're right and I'm wrong. And then I realised, no, no, you know, this is what they do. And there was um, a lady from the north of England who, who um, exposed a massive child trafficking thing. They made a, a, a drama out of it. I got in touch with her and... Um, she was very good, very good to me. She actually even came forward at my um, civil case to give evidence, um, and she also gave evidence at the government inquiry. So, we, you know, we still continued yeah. doing the same thing years later. And she said, look, they're going to come for you. They, they, they'll start doing you for data protection violations because it's so easy. They'll go through all your um, uh, intelligence um, indice searches, you know, because you're dealing with information all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. They're going through all of that, and she said they'll find a violation, and not just one, they'll find many. They're out to nick you, because they did it to me. And okay, and then there was a uh, case in Jersey, Hope de la Garenne, the kid's home, where not only had kids been sexually abused, they'd been killed um, in a dungeon. Um, underneath, there was rumours of rituals, um, and they'd filled this um, basement in with mud, with slurry, and there was a guy went out there. Um, he was in the Met Police, and he went to Scotland. Then he w he got a job out now. And his name's Lenny Harper, a senior officer. Went out there, and he started looking into it. And he run the investigation into this kid's home. And he managed to he did he did a proper job. You know, he took uh, anthropologists, archaeologists. They excavated the the um, cellar. And like kids said, they were chained, they were put in a bath, they were cut, they were mutilated. And he found a bath, there was blood splatters, he found the uh, handcuffs and they found skull, they found bone fragments. And it was identified by uh, a sniffer dog um, as being human. Um, that was given to an anthropologist, anthropologist suggests that's um, the skull of a child aged between seven and ten. Um, they identified certain bits which would uh, quantify that and the bone was sent off for for proper forensic authentication on the matter you know and that was it so they've now got the whole story what the kids have said has now now been backed up with evidence uh of course people that were involved in raping these kids and, and hurting these children linked into people high up in office there and they're clear failing by the police, which is what we saw in Rotherham, Rochdale, and blah, 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 all over the place. And tying, dovetailing in with what I was told, you know, what the kids were telling me, where they were going, how they were being pimped out, and everything else. Bear in mind, we, we hear stories from Luton, from Aylesbury, from Blackburn, from uh, Lancashire, from... We don't hear one case from London. Not one case from London. The largest city in Europe... You know, the, the most diverse city in the world, not one case. You know, so um, the glorious leader of the Metropolitan Police, you know, she's under scrutiny now. Yeah. And they want us to leave. And, and I say to people, get her out. She's failed. 